thinking about it, I could describe it in two words, life changing. That's uh, probably the easiest way to describe it. But so I appreciate you making it possible. I, I don't know who all, but all of you, I guess, were involved in that. And I, I do appreciate it. It is life changing. And I thought about it, just amazing how this began because I won't go into details, but a really negative, bad experience, I guess, in June resulted in probably the most positive experience in my life, in, uh, or one of the most for sure, in November. Amazing how that worked. Uh, but I, of course, remember what Paul said in Romans, that we know that, all th that for those who love God, all things work together for good to those who are called according to His purpose. And I found out that God is faithful and He keeps that promise. So He made a, through you, He turned that around. You, you, God used you to turn a, a big negative around and uh, made a big difference. Well, let me tell you, I know a lot of you are familiar with the procedure, but when we were uh, chosen or picked or uh, enrolled, uh, whatever the word is, to go, Back in the summer, I guess, and uh, these men start praying for you every day. And that, this, that's been one of the big things that amazed me, how these people are praying. Even today, they pray for Limestone County and for churches in Limestone. That's amazing to me to know that there are men in Texas, people in Texas praying for us right now. But they pray for us for a for months before we ever went. And one of the things they uh, pray for is that God will give them a word, a word that will be significant in, in some way in your life. And uh, so they, that's all up front. And then uh, two weeks or so before you actually come, maybe three, they start sending you emails. And in one of those emails, they ask you for a uh, return. You know, tell us about you. Tell us how you heard about it. Tell us kind of what you expect. What do you anticipate? What do you hope to gain from it? Well, the thing that I said in my email was that I've, I've just felt for a long time that there's this line that I need to cross, this, this place that I need to go. Uh, in this spiritual walk, I, I said, I hope to accomplish that. I want to see more clearly what that is, and, uh, and I want to cross this line that seems to be holding me back. Well, when I get there, I find out that my word, and they give you a bracelet, but was door. And I questioned them several times uh, to be sure that they didn't choose that word after I sent my letter. Because, I, I mean, it's just too too obvious because when you go through a door, I mean, you're crossing a line, you cross a threshold, you're going to a new place. And they assured me that there's no knowledge of me really when they picked this word. So I thought, now, I clearly I'm here for the reason that I thought. I'm going to cross this line. And um, as some of you know, this is a big, almost a thousand acre ranch and you spend a lot of time by yourself on it, uh, kind of free to find the place. And uh, by the way, I'd add some words to that. Uh, if I was going to go with prayer and meditation, it would be study, Bible study, worship, prayer, and meditation. That might be the best words to describe it. But you get to go out there and spend your time considering things that you've talked about, studied. Uh, what I was hoping for that uh, this line would kind of be clarified. It'd come clear to me. And it, I think it was on the first morning out. When I come back, I had a good idea of how to define that. And when I thought about it, and this is what I said when I spoke to the, to the group there when it was my turn, but I said that, uh, you know, all these past uh, 35 years or so, I've been a pretty good Bible student. I study. I, but you don't have to believe really to be a Bible student. There's probably people who don't believe that know far more about it than I do. Well, I've always went to church, but you know, you don't have to even believe to go to church. It may just be where your family is. Good place to go see your friends. You may just like it. You may like to, it may be the only social type thing that you have in your life. Music. Man, you know anybody just about likes music. You don't have to believe to even like the music. So I thought, 
prayer is this one thing that you don't do just for the fun of it. I mean, it's just not something you just do because you like it, uh, unless you're all in, all in. And I thought, well, maybe that's it. I, I knew then, but when I thought through those things, I thought, I know prayer is the thing that's, that's a problem in my life. It's what I'm weak at. It's what I'm not maybe all in. I, can, I could say a prayer, you know, say the prayer before a meal, but when it come down to just for real, serious pray, praying, all in praying, I, don't, I didn't do that very much. And as a matter of fact, I, what I said to the men there, I said, when I think back over my life, really, I said, I don't remember ever saying to my family, to my wife or to my kids or to anybody, other than at mealtime, let's pray or we need to pray about somebody that's sick, about anything that's uh, going on in the family or in the world. I've never really just said, well, we need to pray. So I was, that was clear then in my mind, this is the line for me to cross. And uh, I think it's the second time out when I spent a lot of time thinking about why is that? Am I not all in? Am I not a believer? What is it really that's holding me back? Partly just pride, I think. It, you, you spend a lot of years kind of building this uh, persona, I guess. People perceive you a certain way. And uh, you don't like to fool with that very much after about 30 years. You just it, It's going pretty well. You just leave it alone. Well, they thought of me as a Bible student, a, a man that went to church, uh, loved music. But I don't think anybody really thought of me as a, a, pray, a man of prayer, you know. So it's kind of hard to all of a sudden be a different person, you know. Everybody knows you one way. You don't want. To. So I decided that was part of it, part of what I had to lay aside, I guess. And uh, well, get to the end of the story when I come home. Of course, this is this is what I'm gonna do. You know, I'm gonna make this change. I'm gonna cross this line. I'm gonna become a a man of prayer. But you get home kind of late on Sunday night, and I. I remember thinking, but not tonight. <laughs> maybe tomorrow. Maybe the next day, but not tonight. So I changed subject. So, well, what's been going on here while I've been gone? So my wife says, well, let me tell you a funny story about this little two-year-old girl back here in the back, really about the family. She said they were all going to eat, and Ryan got uh, in a little trouble in the back seat and they stopped the car so Chris could talk to him. I said, but Emmy thought he was in worse trouble than that. But she said, and this is Brenda telling me this, that this little two year old girl said, uh, she said to her mom, said, we need to pray. <laughs> so I said, uh, you know, at that point it's a matter of obedience or disobedience. <laughs> and uh, to think that God can use uh, it spoke to me, I mean, I think clearly through a two-year-old girl. And uh, there was no choice really but to uh, obey, I think. And, <laughs> and it's still something I'm working on, but it has been a, a big change already in my life. It's going to be a lot bigger one, but it already has. That's just one, one more little thing. Uh, I didn't even mention this in Texas because it's kind of all the same thing. But I've always taught and loved to teach high school classes at church. Favorite people in the world to teach. But I, and I just finished a quarter teaching before I went to Texas. And I, one thing I thought about it while I was in Texas, you know, we had some good studies. I mean, there's some great classes. But one thing I never did, I never prayed with them. I thought, well, if, when my turn rolls back around, it may be a, another couple of months, but... Uh, I'm going to pray with these kids. Well, Wednesday night, when we came, you know, first night back at church, uh, I guess, after I come back from Texas, the guy who took my place to teach the class called me and said, I'm out of town. I can't get back. I need you to teach this class tonight. Short notice, but I need you to teach it. I said, well, I don't know exactly what we'll talk about, but I know one thing. You know, we'll pray together. And uh, so I had that opportunity just the first night back. Big changes. A uh, lot of other stuff. Can't tell it all, of course, but uh, it is life changing. It's for real. Uh, you might go, somebody from my background, you might be a little skeptical when you go, but uh, it disappears. 
And I appreciate you letting me uh, tell you about it. Appreciate you sending me.